Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are St. Louis. Alan Craig is in the lineup today as the St. Louis Cardinals play host to the Miami Marlins this weekend. And Craig, with two RBIs last night, has jumped up to 68 this season, second best in the National League. Go back clean up today. The highs and lows of being a closer. Edward Mejica, Thursday night. Josh Hamilton takes him deep. Eventually, the Angels win it in dramatic fashion. One of the toughest losses of the season. 24 hours later, Edward Mejica on the mound for the save. He strikes out two. Cardinals back on the winning track. And welcome to St. Louis Cardinals baseball with my partner today, the mad Hungarian Al Roboski. I'm Dan McLaughlin. Al, you did it for a living 13 seasons in the big leagues. Relieving uh, at your height, you were the closer of the St. Louis Cardinals, one of the best in the game. But even when you're really that good, you have some bad nights. You have to come back. Mejica did that last night. Yeah, and, and think about Edward Mejica. You know, he really was a setup man even in the beginning of this year. He inherits the closer's role, but we have never seen him blow a save. So how would he react? Now we can say he reacts very well as he comes back and picks up save number 22 last night, a 1 2 3 ninth inning. Should be a fun afternoon for baseball. The weather is absolutely perfect here in downtown St. Louis. And Joe Kelly gets the start for St. Louis. Nathan Ivaldi will get the start for the Miami Marlins. Cards, Marlins coming up on Fox Sports Midwest.
been able to do as a starter, also as a reliever, primarily a reliever. However, this is a big start for him and maybe from here on out to supplant himself in that starting five. Had a rough spring training when he was buying for the fifth spot in the rotation and maybe even the beginning of the season a little shaky. But when he started settling in and has had three or four times where he has come in as a long reliever, gone about five plus innings, he really showed his strength. This will be his second start and the first time where he's being named the number five starter. So look for him to come out and pitch well. So Joe Kelly getting that start. We'll talk about the All-Stars when we come back. They'll be announced later today. Descalso in the lineup. Baseball coming up. Our team, most of those players will be announced. And for the Cardinals, currently on their roster, a number of their players have been part of the Midsummer Classic. Carlos Beltran most certainly is headed to his eighth All Star game. Yadier Molina, for sure, his fifth. Adam Wainwright may be your starter. But a number of these guys have had that experience and maybe a guy that will have his first ever experience at the All Star game. We think he will, and that's Matt Carpenter. I'm sure his peers understand that he is definitely worthy. All season long, he's been one of the best leadoff hitters with on-base percentage, he leads the National League in multi-hit games. He's been very consistent, and even defensively, he moves to second base for the first time in his career, and he's been nearly flawless at that. We would expect that Brandon Phillips of the Reds will be voted in as the starter. However, let's make a case for Matt Carpenter to be the starter. Comparing the numbers between the two this year, Matt Carpenter right there with one of the best in the game in Brandon Phillips. We've got more coming up. It's Day Baseball from Bush Stadium. Well over 40,000 expected. Marlins, Cards, Game 2 on Fox Sports Midwest.
Stadium for the Matt Holiday Adult Jersey Giveaway. Matt, on your jersey giveaway, you've got to be in the lineup. He is a pair of doubles last night. The Marlins have shown some pop as well. Logan Morrison with a home run last night in game one. He'll bat clean up in game two. First pitch next. Music first, it's the sound of history being made. Here we go. See your Mid-America Chevy dealer or log on to stlchevy.com. Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers, number one for quality tires and expert auto service. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by Steak and Shake. Steak and Shake, just no equal. Time now for our Toyota keys to the game. Al, what do you have highlighted for day baseball? Well, Machine Gun Kelly can't waste any bullets. He's got to be very fine in the fact that he probably is going to be only at 80 to 90 pitches. So he has to be efficient. And from the Cardinal offense, remember they all the, their hits, the majority of their hits, their doubles were pitches out away from him. We'll see if Evalde doesn't pitch inside and change that. Here's Justin Ruggiano to lead it off, and the first pitch is popped up. Right side giving chase, and a good effort. Alan Craig comes up just a bit short. Right about the ever there. 83 degrees here in St. Louis. Our Kia starter looking at the numbers for the 25 year old from Anaheim, California, and that is right hander Joe Kelly. And again, coming into the starting rotation, primarily has worked as a reliever this year. Is making his second start. Most pitches he's thrown in a game this year is 80. But he's been in the 70s a couple times in long relief outings. So I think they feel like he's pretty well stretched out. Here's a 1 1 pitch to Ruggiano. And a fly ball that's lifted into right, backing up Beltron, backpedaling to make the catch, and there's one away. Take a look at this lineup for the Marlins. Ruggiano, Placido Polanco, Giancarlo Stanton. Then Morrison has been red hot. Ozuna, Dietrich, Echevarria, Brantley, Eovaldi, the pitcher batting ninth hitless this year. Cardinals defense brought to you by Dobbs. The changes in this ball game today with Carlos Beltran starting in right field and the big change, Tony Cruz behind the plate. We'll see how these two hook up because in his last start Tony Cruz was not on the same page it didn't seem like with his starter and you wonder if that'll change this afternoon with Joe Kelly. 
Here's Polanco, the 37 year old third baseman, takes a pitch low, two balls and no strikes. That was Lance Lynn, wasn't it? That it was like in a Houston. Trouble communicating. And that's the first time we could say that Tony Cruz ever had problems working with one of the pitchers. Way inside, three balls and no strikes on Polanco. One of our favorites. Still a very good defensive ball player, but hitting at the age of 37 with a bad back is taking its toll. Still a very good defensive player when he has a chance to play, which hasn't been a lot lately. And Lucas is been the primary third baseman and four pitches and a walk to Polanco. One thing Joe really can't afford to do, especially when you're talking about Stanton and Morrison, Suna, some of the big power threats in the middle of their lineup is don't put anybody on the free pass. Here is Stanton, right fielder. For Miami, and that's five straight balls. So the outstanding control last night from Jake Westbrook, 18 ground ball outs from the Cardinal starter. Well, the team needed that. Also, a very quick pace to that ball game, which helped after most guys arrived. The high fly ball lifted into center. Jay puts himself in a position to throw and fires a strike back into second base, two away. Sure did. He really liked the way Don Jay circled behind that high towering fly ball and then was able to come in three or four steps to have his momentum behind the throw just in case Polanco wanted to tag up. You have to anticipate, so watch him go back and now he'll run in a little bit to get that momentum behind it and immediately throws it in. Logan Morrison with a solo home run last night. Began this season on the DL with knee issues. He is one of the leaders of this team. In last 10 games, he has been their hottest hitter. A pair of doubles, two triples, three homers in his last 10. And he has a five game hitting streak against St. Louis. 357, three home runs, three RBIs in those last five. That's going back to last season as he missed the first series that we had in Miami, still recovering from his knee surgery. Short lead at first by Polanco and a fastball for a strike. Well, Kelly can get that fastball up there. Last year he was rated as one of the having one of the highest overall average on his fastball. It was over 94 miles an hour out of the starting position. Working from the stretch, one ball, one strike. Outfield straight away and deep. Matter of fact, Al, he's a hard thrower, and he's not a big guy, as you see. He's 6'1, 175 pounds, yet he can get it up there to 98, 99 miles an hour. And he was a former closer in college at UC Riverside, their career saves leader with 24. But long and wiry. See his curveball, he's got a good one. Here's a ground ball that's hit too short. Taken by Descalso. Morrison retired. Miami strands a runner. That's Polanco. And the Cardinals coming up in the home half of the first.
here at Bush Stadium. Carpenter, Beltron, and Holiday here in the first inning, followed by Craig, Freeze, Descalso. It's Cruz, Jay, and Kelly. One through nine for St. Louis, and the Marlins defense presented by Dobbs. Rob Brantley getting the start today. He's behind the plate, and Nathan Eobaldi, hard throwing right hander that they picked up in the Hanley Ramirez Randy Choate deal from Los Angeles a year ago. And this young rotation that they have, Al, has so much promise, and he's right in the middle of things. Nathan Eovaldi. Well, I think that says it all right there. There was one other right handed pitcher involved in the deal with the Dodgers, but when you're trading Hanley Ramirez and, and our show, Randy Shote, you know, they, that gives you an indication of what they think about this hard throwing right hander. That pitch at 95 since he's come off the DL and he started the season with a sore shoulder. His fastball has been averaging 97 miles an hour. That's the average. Average for Carpenter at 320. Lines it into center and Ozuna is there for the out. He had a very good spring and then towards the end that shoulder started barking. And they set him down for a while, but I'm kind of curious to see if he's going to pitch inside, particularly the right handed batters in the Cardinals lineup. Remember Jacob Turner yesterday made mistakes out over the plate, and the Cardinals had those four doubles. See if Evaldi, Evaldi pitches inside to try and neutralize that. Beltron is hitting 305, that's 12th best. In the National League. He's also 12th in RBIs with 50, and he's hit 19 home runs. And quickly, it's nothing in two. Leading vote getter. Last check for the outfielders of the National League. We'll know for sure if Carlos is headed to the Midsummer Classic at 5.30 tonight on Fox. That's Echevarria. It's fourth. In the league in fielding percentage, they love his glove at short. Yes, it's, I think he's going to hit the young shortstop they got from Toronto. But just what we have seen, the way he plays defense, he plays defense. You know, he's, he's a keeper. Bob Brantley, the young catcher that came with with Turner last night, starter from Detroit. He's back there behind the plate. Now it should be done, but still, when you see it, you appreciate it. Sure. Here's Holiday, pair of doubles last night. Mike Matheny is talking about the fact that, in his mind, Holiday is starting to shorten his swing a little bit, and we're seeing him drive the ball again. That was evident last night. He had two hits and hit the ball hard four different times. He's a career 300 plus hitter. So slow start. But the neck issues seem to be not a problem last night. Maybe just not trying to do too much. We kind of uh, get back to the basics. 3 and 0. Craig on deck. It's a good point. Sometimes a guy will just go back to just being able to stay in a game and not do too much. With their body. Three and one. Pitching away. Of course, a lot of times used to be you pitch away so they hit it to the deepest part of the field, trying to come in. And he walked him. This guy has been just an RBI machine. 10 home runs. And that's very respectable, but 68 RBIs with just 10 home runs. No, those home runs have been on the rise. He hit four home runs on the road trip. A six game hitting streak for Craig. During that time, he's hit 474. Outfield is deep. They shade him just a bit to the opposite way. So big gap in left center. 
And Craig is one of three Cardinals that's hitting well above 300 here at Bush Stadium. If Carpenter at 362, Craig at 338, and Molina 326. It's not what you want to throw down there. It's going to be hard enough for the starting pitcher and having to bend over every time and catch one off the top of the mound. What was your impression of uh, Jacob Turner last night? Yeah, you like his arm. He made a few mistakes, which I'd like to think is has something to do with a good hitting team that he was facing. And I think that uh, he's going to settle in. And sometimes you'd like it so much you, you hope that you could see him pitch for the Cardinals. Two and two the count on Alan Cray. As his dad told Jim last night grew up in this ballpark. And the previous ballpark going to. Postseason games and watching Albert Pujols and Mark McGuire. Off speed pitch taken high and it's three and two so put a ball in the gap holiday may score even though they're playing deep. He's off with his pitch. Craig sitting on 10 home runs and drives it into right. It's slicing foul. Good friends at Barnes Jewish Hospital night in and night out. Give us our difference maker. And this season a difference maker has been Alan Craig second in that RBI ratio. Go ahead RBIs. He's got 19 tied for third and two out RBIs. Even more so, he's so clutch. 32. He's hitting 476 with runners in scoring position this year. That's just an astonishing number. 325 overall. But his average is so much better when he has runners on or in scoring position. 3 2 is popped up. Long way to go for Stanton. Calling off his second baseman, Dietrich, makes the play. We're in St. Louis at Bush Stadium. Day baseball, and there's no score. My favorite growing up right there Ozzy Smith and he wore number one that since has been retired Cardinals.com slash promotions you'll take home his bobblehead that's Friday July 19th and the Cardinals have a really neat weekend 19th the 20th and the 21st as the Cardinals take on the Padres it's a Hall of Fame weekend 
Ozzie Smith bobblehead. Red Shandy's a 1940 jersey giveaway. And then also the Stan the Man statue. It's the one that's uh, the statue at uh, 8th and Clark. So we hope you uh, take that in that Hall of Fame weekend against San Diego. We saw that there's red up there. Perched watching the ball game. He doesn't miss much, does he? No, he doesn't. Still very, very sharp. Here's Marcel Ozuna, and you and I have come away. We've only seen him four games now, but impressed. He's 22 from the Dominican Republic, and he was signed as a youngster, came to the Florida Marlins, and in 2008, that's when he was signed, and since 2010, they say he's really grown into that body. He's had 75 minor league home runs. And he can run, so the combination of power and speed. Not only that, I'm about the catch made last night. Great play. And listening to Mike Shannon on his radio show afterwards at, at the restaurant, said that's what that's what Corey Mays looked like. Is that right? Yes. First strikeout for Joe Kelly. Fox Tracks brought to you by Chevy. Breaking ball here. And Joe has that good breaking ball, so. The overpowering fastball, he can make it, mix in a very good changeup. But I think the real key is to have one more pitch for him, and that breaking ball can be it. This is Derek Dietrich, second baseman. It's called up, and when he made it to the major leagues, he reached base 14 straight games to start his career. Marlins may be facing Joe Kelly at the right time. If you're a Cardinal fan because his last seven appearances which also included a very long outing just two earned runs in nearly 20 innings so he has pitched very well out of the bullpen for St. Louis and also mixed in a spot start. The 2 1 pitch driven into left center field, the first base hit. And it'll be a one out double for Dietrich. Talked about Derek Dietrich, where had seven home runs real quick. Got a low power there. Take a look at the replay brought to you by Plaza Tire Service. The double for Derek Dietrich. Ball just running away from him and a nice swing goes with the pitch hits it to left center. So runner at second base and here's Echevarria hitting 367 his last eight games. Joe Kelly has started two games and relieved twice this season against the Marlins no record but a good ERA. 135. That pitch inside. Excuse me, 132. 1.32. So two relief appearances and also two starts for Joe Kelly against Miami. So there's a whole bunch of new players this year. Did have two relief appearances this year, just covering one and two thirds innings. Two balls and no strikes. Now Joe Kelly has been a lot better with runners on, but base is empty. Opponents hitting 346 against him. Gets a runner on and it drops considerably. Overall 291. Opponents paying average. Outfield is shallow. And that's tapped foul. Marlins stranded a runner back in the first after a one out walk to Polanco. Kelly got Stanton to fly out. Morrison to ground out.
pickoff and back in safely is Dietrich. Now Mike Matheny has shifted his rotation. And it's somewhat disappointing if you're Adam Wainwright to a point because it will not allow him to start the All Star game. The Cardinals will flip flop Wainwright and Miller, so Wayna will get two more starts before the All Star break. That includes Sunday in Chicago. So two more starts for Wainwright, and that would take him out of consideration as the starter for the All Star game. And very close play right there should, should have been called strike perfect pitch on the black down and away but didn't give him the strikeout Mike Bettini discussed that with not only Adam Wainwright but also told Bruce Bochy off the end of the bat little floater drops in for a hit Dietrich on his way to the plate throw by Jay not in time one to nothing Marlins and with the throw to the plate Echevarria heads to second. He's in scoring position. One to nothing, Miami. Single RBI and takes second on the throw. That ball would have gotten to John Jay. He might have had a chance at him, but fires home but just a little late. There you try and see the read. I don't know if he needed to take that complete turn circle. Yeah, Mike said that Adam Wainwright was adamant about wanting the two starts. Yeah, the two starts for his club and not worrying about the All Star game. Fastball and a strike. Eighth place hitter Rob Brantley. Remember last year how Mike informed some of the Players that were selected the All Star team, you know, that didn't have the showcase show that they're going to have tonight, and he's still trying to look forward and hopefully he'll get that opportunity to break the news to some of the guys. But I don't, I'm not sure how. We Last don't, year, we don't though, want a game that long. Well, he had the opportunity to tell Freeze because Freeze was on that list of All Stars that had to be voted in by the fans. That final. Vote so he did make the announcement in front of the team. We actually had a camera in there to show it. It was a neat moment for David. We also tell uh, Lance Lynn as he was picked by his peers. One and two the count. So the rotation now sets up with Miller, Westbrook, Kelly, and Lynn each having one more start before the break. Wainwright. Starting the Sunday finale against Chicago, then they can rework the rotation again after the break. One ball and two strikes. And a foul ball. Our producer, Mike Helling, has done some uh, digging on the umpires and what took place last night. Wanted to get. Uh, their take and their version on what really was an odd play. And again, it was runners at first and second, nobody out, and a bunt situation. The bunt was pushed out in front of the plate. Molina then tagged the hitter, threw down to third, and the third base umpire called the runner out with a force play, not with a tag. And that was the wrong call. And let's uh, give you the play here. That's strikeout number two. So to explain this again, Molina tags out the runner. In essence, the force play is eliminated, but Freeze stepped on the bag. The runner leaves the playing surface, so by him going to the dugout, he is out. And look at the umpire calling him out. So Wrong call. Wrong call there. Would have to be a tag play because the force was no longer effective as Molina got the hitter out and so field and Colbreth said I had the fair foul call and the out call basically simultaneously making a fair call and a foul call at the same time so I was doing so the third base coach came down to yell at me with everybody between me and the coach coming down I lost sight of that in the middle of making both those calls I think the runners fielders and possibly even my colleagues couldn't see my actions as well that's what's led to this confusion. Now you can read all that, but you can also <laughs> just make a statement and said I messed up. 
I mean, that's okay. And I still look at that replay, and I think the. You think it's foul? I think it's foul ball, and that was what Mike Redmond's contention was. The Marlins manager landed, yeah, landed in fair territory, but it came back to to Yachty, and he's standing in foul territory. But it was a very odd play, and their explanation's a little odd too. So two strikeouts for Kelly. Here in the second inning, his pitch count at 34, and as you mentioned, 80 to 90 pitches, the likely scenario for Joe today. The 2-1 to his opposing pitcher, hit out of play. Five pitches above 95. Joe just looks so much more confident in the rotation or when we saw him the last few times in long relief. Kind of found his niche. Big gap in left center the 2 2 pitch. 12 third strike strikes out the side. In the middle of that though a double then an RBI single. Miami on the board first. Saturday afternoon is brought to you by Schnucks, your neighborhood hometown grocer. And go big at a Jack in the Box near you with Jack's new Big Stack Burger. Jim Hayes is with us, Al Roboski, Dan McLaughlin, and well over 40,000 for a Matt Holiday jersey giveaway. Tomorrow, 40,000 plus expected again. Christian Day here at the ballpark. There are still tickets remaining. Willie Robertson will be the featured speaker for Christian Day. Also, the porch flag giveaway tomorrow. And again, tickets still remain at Cardinals.com. I'm sure many of these fans will head down to the riverfront. Fair St. Louis happening. Cardinals are a sponsor of that. Many of the events taking place up until about 11 o'clock tonight. Counting Crows will be the featured musical guest. And they'll begin playing at 8 on the riverfront. Here's St. Louis native David Freeze. One ball, one strike. You and the kids are going to be down there, right? Oh, sure. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Al? It's fun. I've done that before. Freeze hits it in the air out to center. And there's one away. Now they, they may be a little young for the County Crows. They're four and four, six and seven. But oh yeah, we'll, we'll head down to the riverfront. Take it all in. 
When he starts, he's hitting an even 300. Here's Descalso. Mike Matheny said Pete Cosma could return to the lineup tomorrow. But you're talking about three days straight now that Pete has not gotten a start at short. It's gone to Daniel, and he's provided a little spark in this lineup. Mike commenting that he thought that Cosma had a very good batting session yesterday. Might have picked up a few things. But the best thing for the team is Scalzo keep on hitting the way he's hit. In this lineup today, there's two Cardinals that have a hit off of Evaldi. One's to Scalzo, and the other is John Jay. There's Chris Carpenter. You see him, and I know a lot of people uh, will tweet at us and ask, what's the status of Carpenter? And it, you tell you it's good news because Carpenter will throw to live hitters on Wednesday. If all goes well, he'll head to Jupiter and begin throwing down there to some of the players that are at that complex. And then you're talking about July 20th potentially being a, a rehab date and assignment for Chris Carpenter. And when he comes back, we're still not sure what role he may have. But the bottom line is he felt very good in his last session. Apparently yesterday was that session. It was the best by far that he's had to date. Late movement, everything felt good. Body held up. If we get a positive report today, then you'll see that he'll face some of his teammates here. And then, as you say, go down. And he will do probably the go down as long as a month. He'll be there pretty much that length of time. Three and two on Descalso. Tony Cruz is on deck. And Daniel is jammed and pops it up. On the outfield grass. Shortstop wants it, puts it away. You can join us and the Cardinals for Mizzou night. August 24th get your tickets at Cardinals.com slash theme because fans with the special Mizzou ticket can take home a limited edition Cardinals cap for tickets go to Cardinals.com slash theme. Nothing wrong with Yadier Molina just giving the day off and Tony Cruz starts behind the plate. Yadi by the way started a team high 78 of the Cardinals first 85 games and still the league's leading hitter. That's the eighth start for Tony Cruz. Down here Molina tops in the major leagues and innings caught second in his catcher's ERA so the rare opportunity for Tony Cruz. And when this starter gets two strikes on you, more times than not, he puts you away. One hit against him when he is allowed that count to go to two strikes the entire year. 0 2 pitch. Making his fourth start. But came in 1 0 with an ERA of 2. And he strikes out Cruz. His first strikeout of the afternoon. We played two here at Bush Stadium. And the Marlins are on top by a run.
day, but we have seen an awful lot of Matt Adams at first base. With more on that, let's check in with Jim Hayes. Hello, Jim. Hi, Dan. And for a guy known for his hittings, uh, hitting, Adams has made some dazzling defensive plays over the recent stretch. I asked Adams after the game last night if he was surprised that so many people didn't know about his defense, and he said he's surprising himself with some of those plays. He does say he's better defensively for a couple of reasons, both related to Jose Akendo. He said he's worked with Kendo extensively about taking the right angle to balls that helps and also comfort knowing he could look in the dugout and see if Jose says he's positioned in the right place that helps a lot too. Yeah for being a big man is Rigiano the leadoff man in the lineup looks at a strike for being a big man Jose Kendo has told both of us he moves quite well as Kelly is pitching here into the third. Jim you had a chance to visit with uh, John Moselock yesterday interesting talk. One of the questions and issues was about pitching. Carlos Martinez, Michael Waka. Martinez, eighth start for AAA last night, as this is tapped to the left side and Freeze makes a nifty play. Gave up his first home run, but five and a third, four walks, one strikeout, and again, though, not many runs. He's allowed just two runs or fewer in all of his eight starts. So the question, Jim, at this point, when will we see Carlos Martinez or Michael Waka? Well, John Mazalak wasn't exactly giving a lot of answers. A lot of it depends on what they decide to do in terms of the trade deadline. But he said they have big plans for both guys. They're watching them closely. They're trying to space them out. As you guys know, they didn't want to tax them in terms of amount of innings early on so that they could use them in the second half as needed. But uh, you get the sense they are, they're going to be a big part of what the Cardinals will do in the second half. Thank you, Jim. And here is Polanco walked his first time up. One of my concerns is when you're not going very deep at triple A you come up here it's going to be an inning or two shorter five and a third last night and a part of that is what you're talking about the four walks that he issued in that ball game first pitch strikes for Joe Kelly take a look at those just three of eleven uh, he's got forty one pitches right now nineteen balls twenty two strikes. Well we know that the Marlins aren't afraid to trade anybody and you wonder if teams would be inclined to look towards a veteran and a presence like Polanco. As he looks at his strike three and one. Played only 90 games last year for the Phillies and takes that low. Draws his second walk of the day. Swing for the fences with the new Home Run Derby mobile game from MLB.com. It's available now on iPhone, iPad. Download it for free right now. Both walks are to Polanco. Giancarlo Stanton. Last eight games against St. Louis. He's hit nearly 400 a pair of home runs and he flied out to center first time up 0 for 1. He is under the control of the Marlins until after 2016. And you talk to people around baseball the minor league system of the Marlins is loaded with very good outfielders in particular at double A. One of the great power hitters right now in the game. Eight home runs in limited time. Had a hamstring injury. Put him on the DL. Missed considerable time early on. And it's only his 44th game. Short lead at first. Here's a 2 0 pitch and watch out. 3 0. 6 6. 240 pounds and only 23 years of age. Former defensive back and wide receiver. Coming out of high school, he had a full ride to USC. Decided to forego that and signed to play baseball. Swinging away on 3 0, and the Cardinals will get away with this one. Or will they? Boy, was Beltron deep in right field. That was a long way to go to make that catch, and there's two away. As long as he makes it, 
It's okay. But you're right. He, he had a long run. Here's Logan Morrison. Morrison grounded out on a curveball too short. His first plate appearance. He's only appearing in his 19th game this year. Had offseason knee surgery, missed all spring training. Things have turned around for the Marlins considerably. Started out just with a terrible beginning of the season 13 and 41. Since that time, though, 19 and 12. Much of that due to their pitching, but their offense has picked up too. Shut out out nine times. Nine times already, but Morrison back in the lineup and healthy makes a difference. And what you need to know about him, he's born in Kansas City, runs a baseball camp benefiting the American Lung Association, and once was a tour guide on a double decker bus. William Woods uh, Community College. He and David Freeze actually played against each other in junior college. David Forest Park and uh, Merrimack actually and then went on to play a four year school and then got drafted. One ball and two strikes with two outs and a runner at first. I think this is what frustrates you if you're Derek Lilliquist going deep into account with every batter just about for Joe Kelly. Just you know, just flip a coin, ball strike, strike ball. 26 balls, 26 strikes. Fly ball, deep left. Holiday back, looks up, and it's gone. Opposite field home run on a 2 2 pitch off the bat of Logan Morrison. 3 0 Miami. Is fourth, and he drives in RBIs 9 and 10. Talked about how he hit the solo home run last night. This is a two run shot. He's got great power. Break the ball away just right on borderline, but all just kept on carrying. He's done some damage against the Cardinals, hasn't he? Yes, he has. Nice pick, the soft hands by Freeze. That takes a hit away from Ozuna. Freeze was near the line. Two run shot by Morrison. Miami on top by three.
Oklahoma. So it brings us to this question, the AT&T Twitter poll. Who is the greatest slugger born in Oklahoma? Mickey Mantle, Johnny Bench, Willie Stargell, Joe Carter played at Wichita State, Missouri Valley Conference. One of the most famous home runs ever by Joe Carter. Winning a World Series for the Blue Jays. It's Jay, then Joe Kelly in the top of the lineup for St. Louis. Cardinals with just seven hits last night, but picked up the win. They have no hits today. And he chases that pitch out of the zone. Strikeout of John Jay. Number two this afternoon. John Jay took a pitch before that was better than this one he swings at. All up there usually is the pitcher's pitch. Joe Kelly. Very athletic, fast runner, hard thrower. His dad, a wide receiver at Vanderbilt, and then signed contract to play professional football with the San Diego Chargers. So he comes from a family of athletes. Dad, a very good football player. And Kelly, a base hit, the first of the Cardinals, and it's into center field. Second base runner, first hit by a Cardinal, and it's off the pitcher. Second time through this lineup, let's take a look what the Cardinals can do, what kind of adjustments are made. Here's Carpenter, who is in that leadoff spot. It seemed like this offense took off when he was inserted as a leadoff man. 63rd time he's in the leadoff spot. One out runner at first and he's showing butt. Matt came in sixth in the National League in hitting at 320. Fifth in hits at 105. And the ever important stat for a leadoff man on base percentage near 400 at 393. And that also is in the top five of the league. Been the definition of a leadoff hitter except for stolen bases. And how many today are really stealers? And Carpenter drives it into right center field. Ozuna on the move. He will get it. To the wall it goes. Kelly, he will score. Carpenter on his way to third. The outfielder slips on the play. He's standing up with an RBI triple. It's now three to one Miami. The seventh RBI. So I soon to make an outstanding play last night. He was in right center, went racing across center field outfield, got into left center, and just reached down and got one off the shoe tops. Here he tries to reach. Never left his feet last night. He does here. And it was no doubt with Joe Kelly's speed that he was going to score easily. With Carpenter get more than a triple. Fourth triple of the season for Carpenter. That leads the ball club. He's got the play in front of him. He can make all the judgments he really needs. And then goes over to third base. And Okendo holds him up there. Got to pick up this one run. Beltron at the plate. Grounded out to short. First time up. Here's a 1-0 pitch. 
breaking ball in on the hands of Beltron a couple of times today. I've been expecting him to pitch a little more inside, but I was thinking more with a fastball rather than a cutter. Two balls and one strike. Pirates will play later this afternoon at Wrigley Field in Chicago. Cincinnati hosting Seattle. Beltron up the middle for a base hit. It's now three to two. RBI number 51 for Carlos Beltron, who's now hitting above 456 with runners in scoring position this year. Have to want to be in RBI situations. Just look forward to it. In this case, to hit anything to the right side, it was going to produce a run, and he gives one even better as young second baseman Dietrich couldn't come up with that one, so he's on base. And just like that, three consecutive hits after having none today, and it's a 3 2 ball game, and here is Matt Holiday. Jersey, isn't it? it? Is Jersey giveaway? Well, you always do something good on your Jersey day. Are you ready for your uh, bobblehead giveaway next season? Shannon, last night could be hungo next year. I don't know if I have that much discretionary funds for for two weddings coming up. You don't have to invest a dime. <laughs> I'll just show up. <laughs> And I do think the Hungo giveaway next year for Bobblehead Day will be a huge promotional night or day. Uh oh, it's a double play. Seen a lot of that off the bat of Matt Holiday. Cardinals, though, get on the board. And it's a 3 2 ball game as we head to the fourth. St. Louis Cardinals are helping Fair St. Louis. They're one of the major sponsors, and we've got the air show coming up at 5. And on the Budweiser main stage, Counting Crows at 8. Enterprise Rent-A-Car, Edward Jones Fireworks at 920. So come on down and enjoy Fair St. Louis. Dietrich, Echevarria, and Brantley as Carpenter picked up his fourth triple and an RBI. And it was uh, Beltron with a single up the middle. That makes it a 3 2 game. Joe Kelly can't settle in right now. D 
Deep right field. Beltron back. That's not going to settle in. Except into the bullpen. Eighth home run by the young second baseman. He got to seven very quick. Is it going to be one of those kind of games? So first pitch of the fourth lands into the Cardinal bullpen. Hyundai replay Dietrich. First pitch. He's now two for two. Step over in the middle of the plate. He's got great power. Doesn't hit for a high average, but it's eight home runs in 48 games. Here's the shortstop at Chavaria. He got things started for the Marlins in the second inning with a base hit off the end of the bat into center field. He picked up his 22nd RBI to score Dietrich, who had doubled that inning. Descalso to his left and quickly over to first and into the seats it goes. Home run and an error. You can see where Descalso initially first. Step or two came in, then backed up a bit to his left and commits a throwing error. Look, okay, he's kind of way down there, and then all of a sudden he kind of came up and threw it on a funny trajectory. Watch him go down, and then look at that how he cut across the ball, and the ball just sailed on him. It's right on that opening. Right on the lip and kicked into the stands. Went up into the stands. And with two base error. Stalzo's sixth error of the year. He'd been playing so well, too. Curve ball that's pulled foul. This is Rob Brantley. Eighth place hitter. So Joe Kelly back in the uh, starting rotation. Has walked to giving up four hits and a pair of home runs. A fly ball that's lifted to center. Jay going back. Echevarria will tag up. And there's one away. Evaldi, the pitcher, first time up, was called out on strikes. Infield is drawn in with the runner at third. Outfield is shallow, big gap in left center. Swinging, and is there a play at the plate? Not in time. Oh, it is! They're going to say he's out, and we'll have an argument. I can't believe that one. I agree with you, Dan. It looked like his legs were wow. completely across the plate. Ever before the tag was even come down. I didn't think that was even close. The Cardinals, in my estimation, catch a huge break. Replay will tell the truth. Goodness gracious. Bill Welke is our home plate umpire. He's trying to justify to Mike Redman. Youngest catcher in the game at 40, youngest manager at 41. He was a backup catcher for Marlins. Two years of manager experience in the Florida State League for the Toronto organization. And look at this throw. He's oh my goodness. Not even close. Not even close. He should have been safe by a mile the way it looked to us. Just his feet. He's, the umpire was just looking at the throw. He never really looked down to see his feet across the plate. 
Redmond thought he got cheated last night and he gets cheated again here. You know initially the left leg was blocked but then the right leg never was touched by Cruz and slides right in and right over the plate. And uh, the players applauding his uh, their manager because the other time he was ejected apparently it was just like a casual conversation. And they said look man if you're going to get ejected. Get your money's worth. Well, he got he got Jacob Turner's uh, autograph on the scorecard. Right, right. Right. And his first ejection. So two outs and a runner at first, and a strike to Justin Reggiano. Cardinals already down by two. They catch a break there. Maybe that will jumpstart them a little bit. Get out of this inning and get back on offense. Going on contact, the ball the right side, you just race on home and I still think even though that, that front leg was way up in the air that we had a hard time, it looked like this the back leg caught the plate first. The Cardinals though do catch a break in our estimation. Left leg initially blocked, but the right leg right across the plate. Nineteen forties Jersey. What a giveaway that'll be. You see a picture there on the right. Very similar to what the Cardinals are wearing as far as their Saturday. Jerseys that uh, alternate Jersey but that's coming up in that Hall of Fame weekend against San Diego. Was it 1946 when they had the black bat. I believe so. Oh, there's a little different touch on the Jersey. So here's Alan Craig. Four to two Miami. Craig flied out to right on a three two pitch his first time up. He looks at a fastball low. I'm sure part of being ejected too. Is the frustration of the call last night. Exactly. That carries over. And then you have a missed call in our estimation at the plate, and emotion, emotions boil over for Mike Redman. Let's put it this way if it would have been a reverse call, there would have been no argument from Mike Matheny. Nope. The 2 0 pitch. You know, Al, there's now 13 managers that have had playing experience as a catcher, whether it was in the 
major leagues or minor leagues, but professional baseball, 13 managers with that experience. There's a strike to Craig. And in my estimation, it prepares you more for post career. If you're at the catching position, you're so involved. And there's a leadoff walk. If you're a catcher, you're involved in every aspect of the defense, the pitchers. You have a tendency to see the big picture rather than kind of tunnel vision and just worry about your own part, whether you're an infielder, an outfielder, or a pitcher. Here's David Freeze. Mike Matheny told me with Jacob Turner when he was catching him on the side and also helping him coach, he said it wasn't so much about the physical aspect of the game, but he would pull him aside and say, Why did you throw that pitch in that particular spot? What was your mindset and your approach with this hitter? And Jacob Turner back then was throwing 97 98 consistently and just blowing away high school hitters. And now he's more around that 94 95, but it's a, a thinking man's game along with also having the physical tools to be able to play at this level. It drops in for a strike, nothing at two. Missouri Lottery Fox tracks. Pretty good breaking ball here. A late break to it. Missed the strike zone, but got the call. O2 is hit to second. And the Marlins turn their second double play. To watch him play shortstop. Very, very talented. Left side of their infield is very good today. Echeverria and Polanco. Yep, and Polanco only two errors in 140 chances. Former Gold Glover at third and at second. Two balls and no strikes on Descalso. Popped out to short his first time up. Jacob Turner is 22. Jose Fernandez will see him tomorrow. He's 20. Ivaldi is 23. And in 25 games started, their ERA, the combined ERA of those three, is just over two. That's why they have high hopes for the Marlins. And this young man is able to put most hitters away. He walks to Scalso. Third walk he's issued. Second in this inning. Brings in Tony Cruz. He struck out swinging on a fastball his first time up. You don't get many breaks in this league, Al. You think about sitting all that time and then getting a start against a guy that's throwing consistently in the mid 90s, but that's the way it is now in this day and age of baseball. All these hard throwers and young pitchers with great arms. Tony Cruz wants the challenge. She said it's tough. Couple of uh, hard throwers here today. Charter high speed pitch. Evaldi's hit 98, Kelly 96, and the Marlins right hander a couple of times has been shaking his head with the strike zone. He's not happy about that. And look at 
that 41 pitches above 95. It's get to be very impressive and mention he's from Houston. Dodgers signed him. And then he was involved in the Hanley Ramirez trade. So you knew that the Dodgers were very high on him. Well, and rightfully so the Marlins. But you know you if you're trying to win every year it's hard to have these young kids and allow them the, the space the time to learn here at the major level because you're most of the time you're not going to win with the real young kids. 2 2 pitch. On the ground is second. And an easy play for Derek Dietrich. Cardinals strand a runner. They have stranded just one this afternoon. They trail by two. Later tonight at 5.30 before the primetime games. See your Cardinals, which one will be part of the All-Star game. Probably should say which ones uh, many we anticipate headed to the Midsummer Classic at City Field in New York. And I think we can go on record right now and say that Cardinal Nation won't agree with everything that goes on. I think just about every team could probably say sure, that. Sure, but I think with the first half, a lot of the Cardinal players have had that. I'm sure we're not going to have seven or eight representatives, and there are probably seven or eight guys that are deserving. Here's Placido Polanco. I, I would think too with Wainwright. Getting two starts and now officially knowing that he will not start or pitch in the All Star game, that with the game being at City Field in New York, Matt Harvey would surprise me one bit. And he would get the, the call to make the All Star game start. I agree. The team with the best record as Stan digs in is Pittsburgh, 53 and 32. Got McCutcheon. Jason Grilly. Jason Grilly, their closer. Pedro Alvarez potentially. He's caught fire. There's Stanton who's over two. He's fly to center and flied out to right. Looks at a pitch. Low at 95 miles an hour. Fastest Marlin to 100 home runs is Stanton. The fastest in Major League history, if you're wondering, St. Louis and Ryan Howard got to 100 home runs in 325 games. Diving stop by Descalso, the long throw, and not in time. We know Daniel's got a cannon, but Stanton 
you know, get down the line even with that sore hamstring and Craig had to come off the bag and make sure that uh, Descalso didn't pick up his second error. Yeah there are times when a guy at first will stay on the bag too much. This is the proper way when you see a ball like that don't try and stretch out and catch it and put that runner in scoring position at second base vacate the bag and make sure you hold on to it and seed the hit. Cardinals trying to figure out how to get this guy out. He's hit St. Louis so well in his career. One for two today with an opposite field. Two run homer. How about a double play? Descalso steps on the bat. That's two. First double play turned by St. Louis. Choose where you'd like to sit, both home and road, stubhub.com. Lady in the bottom right is really into it. There's John Jay. Cardinals trailing four to two. Struck out on a 2 2 pitch, chased it out of the zone first time up, just like that. That pitch right there. This time he stays with it and looks at a ball. It's Jay, Joe Kelly, and Matt Carpenter. John Jay up the line. He is safe. Terrific effort by Dietrich, but a base hit for Jay, and the leadoff man is aboard. The tying run will come to the plate. Chavaria was the property of the Toronto Blue Jays. They had that big, big trade, about 11 players or so with the Marlins. One of the players they got was another shortstop, Yunel Escobar. And the deal, the Marlins had to take Escobar, but they were able to trade him for Dietrich. So he, Dietrich was property of Tampa Bay, and it looks like Mullins are a lot happier with this young second baseman. And Kelly showing bunt back to the pitcher. Out there. And safe at first. John Jay going hard into the bag at second base. Hit, hit it too hard right back at the pitcher. Immediately got it. Got the lead man, John Jay, out at second base. So he bunts it right back at the pitcher. Is bunted hard. Look at that. Wastes no time at all. Gets a force play there. John Jay takes out the pivot man. That throw was wide, and that's what allowed Kelly to be safe at first base. Just clean, hard baseball. Here's Matt Carpenter lined out to center. 
And then picked up his fourth triple of the season back in the third. And also an RBI and a run scored. Another aspect of Carpenter's game often overlooked all the runs scored that he's had this year, too. As a leadoff man, you want to get on base and you want to score. That's the idea. Yeah, and so I mean, other than stealing bases, Carpenter's been ideal. It works the count, not afraid to hit two strikes. He turned two double plays with Kelly, even though he's a pitcher. He runs so well, you might be able to put something on. Now, an indication of how tough Carpenter is for a pitcher. You see the run leaders, he's at 65 and big names on that list. But you get two strikes on Matt Carpenter, and he seems to get better on a 1 2 count. He's a 297 hitter. On two and two, he's 326. Very tough to put away. That's what I'm saying. He, you know, he just feels very comfortable if he's down in the count. Got a good batting eye. The strike zone's been kind of all over the place, hasn't it? It has. And we've seen more of the arguments, I think, from Evaldi than anybody else, especially last inning. Let's see if uh, he can keep that 326 batting average and keep it on the rise. With two balls and two strikes. Pops it up. Left side. Echevarria wants it, but called off. And a catch made by Rogiano. I just want the outfielder to take charge on that, but called it very, very late and very close to his shortstop, the third baseman going out there. So Maria trying to call it, but once he hears Ruggiano, his left fielder, he tries to get out of the way and barely does. Here's Beltron. He has an RBI single. One for two today. He is driven in 51. Baldy a pitch count at 74. Short lead at first. It's Joe Kelly there. One ball, one strike. Good balance for Beltron, both left and right in the batter's box. Getting 300 from both sides. Six home runs right handed, 13 home runs left handed, and roughly two and a half times more at bats left handed than right, driven in 20 right handed and 31 left handed. Two and two. Two-two pitch, got him. Off-speed pitch, Beltron strikes out and three Ks today for Nathan Evaldi, 23-year-old from Texas.
sensation. Cuban defector will get the start tomorrow for Miami. Budweiser, what's on tap? Last six starts, three and one. Opponents hitting 150 against him. In my mind, Alan, I've said this a couple of times, he's the best we've seen this year. He is just flat out nasty. Remember, the Cardinals got back to back. They got Matt Harvey in New York, and then they got Fernandez a couple days later down in Miami. When you talk to the players, even though Fernandez struck out 10 Redbirds that day, the Cardinal players felt that Harvey had more ways to get you out. They were more impressed with Harvey than they were Fernandez, but those are two pretty good arms. Man, back to back Harvey and Fernandez. And here's Marcel Ozuna. As much heat as the Marlins get concerning gutting their payroll and the big names that they have, you also then have to give them a little credit for having Ozuna and Fernandez as a part of this roster. You know, non contending teams usually watch service time and wait to start a, a player's clock towards arbitration ultimately free agency but they didn't do that with these two young players. I don't think they could have to worry about it. They gutted their payroll so far down that. And they could afford to start the clock on some young talent. And we understand it, it's always been you know, it was Wayne Heisinga at first. And then Gloria now that. One one championships and then dismantled ball club. Strikeout of Ozuna. So four strikeouts today for Kelly and two have been against Ozuna. Multiple World Series winners since '97. Marlins did it in 1997. Gutted the franchise awful in '98. Rebuilt one again in 2003. Yankees have four of those. Cardinals 2006. 2011 since 06 the Cardinals have produced more major league talent than any team in baseball. Now whether or not that talent. Came through to wear a uh, Cardinal jersey. Or not. That's not part of the story. The Cardinals either drafted or signed. More players than anybody else since 2006 that have made their way to the big leagues as Dietrich. Is out number two. How about St. Louis reached postseason nine of the last 13 years, a run that included two world championships and three National League pennants. And when you win, you draw. And the Cardinals have certainly done that. And we talk all the time about the nice promotion schedule. The Cardinals really do a good job there, but the best promotion is winning. Tough play here for Fraze, and he makes it. Outstanding play from the Cardinal third baseman David Freeze. Big bats do up for St. Louis, Holiday, Craig, and Freeze.
Christmas. Matt Holiday, Jersey Day here at the ballpark. Close to 45,000 in attendance. Firestone, extra mile index. Matt Holiday, 352 average since 2004 against the Marlins. Fourth best in that time period. Andre Ethier, Matt Diaz, Joey Votto, Holiday, the Jerry Hairston Jr. Holiday has walked, also bounced into a double play. And it's Holiday, Craig, and Freeze. Brantley, we showed him having trouble throwing back to the pitcher. How about throwing down to second? Just a okay. bit outside. <laughs> <laughs> one ball, one strike. Hey, yeah, sure can hustle back it up. He bases. hustles. Let's give him credit. He hustles. Time is called. Popped up to the right side. Dietrich calling for it. And he's got it. And Seth Manus begins to throw in the Cardinal bullpen. If this is it for Joe Kelly, he gives the Cardinals six innings and allows four runs. Cardinals down by two, but they've got a chance in this ball game. That's all you ask from your starter. Here's Craig, who was flied out to right, also walked. Every time we come back to St. Louis, we uh, take in the construction across the street, Ballpark Village. That's a look at the uh, the rooftop deck and actual seating. Two tier deck that'll have seats, indoor outdoor seating. It'll look into the ballpark and. Uh, That'll be ready to go for opening day next year. It'll be an all inclusive area, kind of that Wrigley Field touch to it with the rooftop deck, but uh, it will be sensational. Also, that area will have passes as far as the all inclusive package that you get with indoor outdoor seating and the food and beverages. But uh, you have a ticket to the Cardinals Museum. I, I know we sound like homers, but I think it's going to be fabulous. It's going to add to your experience coming to a game. And I'm okay sound like a homer because I'm going to take it in Al. Yep. Well, I think we're all looking forward to seeing the reopening of the Cardinals Hall of Fame. Got to have a baseball up there. Oh, huh? Absolutely. Polanco the long throw and makes the play. The DeWitt family. Real Madrid and Inter Milan coming up and get your tickets at Ticketmaster.com. The DeWitt family has invested astronomical sums of money to probably have the best Hall, uh, Hall of Fame museum this Never side of collection. Uh, this side of uh, Cooperstown. A lot of pieces are donated to the museum, uh, loaned to the museum, but then the the DeWitts have spent a lot of money to bring the finest collection to the Cardinal Nation. That'll be on display at uh, Ballpark Village. His freeze lifts a high fly ball into right field. Catch is made by Stamp.
season long and the statue giveaway coming up on that Hall of Fame weekend. Replica bronze statue Sunday July 21st. Padres will be in town. Ozzy Smith bobblehead. That collection in the series of the statues. Corner of 8th and Clark. This year features Stan the Man. That's his second statue. That was the first of the two out there, but uh, that's when you first walk into the main gates. The Stan the Man statue here at Bush Stadium. So Kelly he gave his teammates a fighting chance. Kelly goes the first six innings on allows five hits. As you see, Seth Manus will take over here in the seventh inning. Seth hasn't pitched since last Sunday in Oakland. And it's our Chevy called to the bullpen. Might have a 300 average against, but you can get those double plays right after giving up a base hit. Seth leads the National League inducing nine double plays. There's a line drive and a base hit out to left off the bat of Rob Brantley. And Holiday holds him to a single. A Russell there by Holiday to keep that just a single. And that, as I said, right on order. Now we'll get a double play ball. Slice can go down the corner, but he cuts it off and gets it back quickly. And Brantley has to hold it first. Be interesting to see how the Cardinals approach the second half with Carlos Martinez, Michael Waka, and then what they think about the start of Joe Kelly today. Manus steps, throws. Carpenter covering the bag. Sacrifice is good. Just how they want to approach that and the upcoming trade deadline as well. Nice easy piece of hitting, dead in that ball properly. The Cardinals have that commodity of young starting pitcher. It's very tough, Dan, to win with multiple. Rookie pitchers. That pitch just missed two balls, one strike. Justin Ruggiano at the plate. He's fly to right and also grounded out slowly to third. No excuse, but yesterday when the ball club landed early yesterday morning, by the time he took the bus to back to the airport or from the airport here to Bush Stadium, get your, retrieve your car and luggage, those guys were getting. To bed at 6 6 30 maybe even 7 o'clock in the morning and we thought today would be more of the drag day than than yesterday two and two on Justin Reggiano Tom Me, our director, Mike Kelly, our producer. And right on cue, we go to Big Mac Land, Al, and you can try the new Egg White Delight McMuffin, only 250 calories and only at McDonald's. There's two in the front row having some fun there. 3 2 is hit sharply towards first, and Craig circles it, steps on the back, round number two. You better be careful. Tom Me will find you, our director. She is texting and right in those seats, uh, you got to pay attention. Those liners will get you. So there's no texting when driving or sitting right there in the front row where line drives are hit. 
Ground ball. Diving stop by Craig. Saves a run. Made us out of the jam. Time to stretch in a beautiful afternoon. Nicely done, Alan Craig. And the Cardinals need to get something going offensively with only four base hits today. The Miami Marlins, four. St. Louis Cardinals, two. Major League Baseball on Fox Sports Midwest. seen is your favorite slugger born in Oklahoma the AT&T Twitter poll how well do you know the Mick Al got to know him a little bit I remember one time I, I took Nikki to to uh, Louisville for a signing and an old timers game and Mick couldn't have been couldn't have been even uh, nicer to, to Nikki I think she was about 14 at that time and everything and then I had the real pleasure the first time I ever met him. I met him with Billy Wait, uh, Billy Martin, at a banquet in Springfield, Illinois. Here's a ground ball that's hit to the right side, and Descalso is the first out. All right, the guys in the truck are fixated on Mr. Brantley. How did he do this time? Oh, he hustled again, but Dan went. It. Was at this banquet, and Billy Martin told me, he said, Now we can't go anyplace without getting in trouble. So take it like last night. We went to a bar. Went to a bar, and they were telling stories to everybody. And then somebody came up and said, There's a group in the back in a, in a banquet room that wanted to talk to them. So they went to the back to meet this group of, of patrons. And Apparently they spent too much time talking to the second group that the first group got upset because they weren't there. But the second group was a group of hearing impaired people. And Mickey said, we've always wanted to sing, so what better group to sing to is a bunch of hearing impaired people. And then they got in trouble with the the group in the front of the bar because they spent too much time with the hearing impaired. Why do I feel like we're in trouble now? What <laughs> ball? That's one about strike. as clean as I could keep it. I understand. <laughs> one and two, the count on Tony Cruz. Well, the joys of coming to the ballpark every day is Cruz picks up a base hit. When you watch a game out, you never know what you might see. When you broadcast a game with you, you never know what you might My hear. Dear. <laughs> I knew that was coming. <laughs> so a single for Cruz. His first hit of the afternoon. 
And here is John Jay on the bench today for the Cardinals. They still have Matt Adams and Yadier Molina. So two very good offensive weapons for Mike Matheny at his disposal. John Jay an infield hit. And he also struck out on a 2 2 pitch. John Jay on base and then bring up Matt Adams for the chance to give the Cardinals a lead. You bring him up, that would probably bring in Mike Dunn, who's been throwing in the pen from their left side. They've got Dunn and Jennings. We've seen Matt hit a home run off the lefty before. It can happen in Oakland. Shallow left. Reggiano coming on to make the catch. And there's two away. Third of five Ice Mountain autographs coming up on July 10th. Cards and Astros, that's next week. And current and former players signing before the game. Cardinals.com slash promotions. So Matt Adams will be the pitch hitter. Seth Manis puts in a scoreless inning. And we'll see a pitching change when we come back. The big man will step in. Cardinals down by two. Ubers rewind. Let's get you caught up as Logan Morrison is one for three with a home run and two RBIs. Matter of fact, his last six games against St. Louis, he's had home runs in four of them. Of all the six and two thirds, five hits, a couple of earned runs. And Joe Kelly making the start, six innings, five hits, four earned runs. AT&T, Ubers recap. From there, we go to our Chevy call to the pen, and the lefty Mike Dunn takes over. This will be his 43rd appearance. Hard throwing lefty too. And he's seventh and amongst all major league pitchers with his 43 appearances. He allowed his second home run on June 19th at Arizona. He had made 34 consecutive appearances without allowing a home run. And left handed batters are actually hitting higher, not by much. 243 left handed batters. Average against Dunn with no home runs. Righty's 239 with two home runs. So the 12th sold out crowd. 45,475 here today. Matt Adams looks at a fastball at 94 for strike one. 
is no disrespect to the Marlins, but this isn't the Cubs. And it's not a, a team from interleague play like Boston or New York. This is the Miami Marlins in back to back crowds of 45,000 plus. And outstanding giveaways. One ball, one strike. Done very good at home with a 1.62 ERA, but. Two and two on the road and ERA over four. And leads the ball club with seven RBI, or excuse me, seven pinch hits. The fifth highest bullpen ERA, Miami. One ball and two strikes on Adams. Adams with a high fly ball. Deep right. Did he get it up? We are tied. Off the bench. The big man puts it in the bullpen. Tied up for four. You seem to be a bit worried that uh, Mike Redmond might bring in the left handed gun to face Adams. I on the other side was that. That's you looking into it now. I was ready for it. There he misses location down and in. He just drops the bad head and lift off. Look at Stanton. Scales the wall. And All right. what a cutting call. All right. 4 4 game is Carpenter. Shows bunt and it's put out of play. Stanton trying to do everything he can. Wow, how far was he back on that? I think he had enough time he could have got up and maybe even tried to stand on top of the wall. What do you think, Dan? You think he could have got up there and stood up and you would have had the height then? Great effort. <laughs> But he misses. They want that ball down and away. Look at the catcher's gloves go right back over the middle, down and in. The right fielder, Carlos Stanton, tries to scale that wall and get every bit of height he could muster. You know, Carpenter can be tough against the left hander. How he stays in there. Takes a step. He's right on the top of the. The padding there. Here's a one two pitch. Back to Dunn. Jolt sent through the stadium with one swing of the bat. Matt Adams has tied it up. 4 4. Update Pat Paris standing by. Mm -hmm. 
Trevor Rosenthal was sensational in the eighth inning last night. Struck out the side. And he was throwing a heat, as we've come to expect. Three Ks in that eighth inning, and then it was the uh, Mejica save as he struck out two. Matt Adams is now... Trevor Rosenthal is in a Chevy call to the pen ERA just over two and the strikeouts up to 59 in 40 innings Adams is now eight for 23 as a pinch hitter two home runs six RBIs and that was the big question about Matt could he stay sharp coming off the bench could he be a pinch hitter at this level could he do it against that specialist the lefty coming out of the pen and we're getting the answers to all those in a positive fashion. So pinch hit leaders. Adams at eight. Lance Nix leads the league at ten. Good matchup here with Giancarlo Stanton and the hard throwing Rosenthal. Two balls and no strikes. He's tied for second in the National League with his 59 strikeouts. I bet uh, those other guys have more innings. Not what you want there. Lead off walk if the Cardinals have tied it. Carlos Beltran has his night in old San Juan coming up. Get your tickets at Carlos Beltran STL.com. Most, if not all, the players will be there. Chance to say hello to Carlos Beltran benefits his foundation and also Cardinals care. Very giving man, isn't he? As he should be. You know, Rosenthal at the beginning of last half inning, it was Michael Blazik warming up. And Rosenthal had to get ready in a hurry, and maybe the reason he's fighting find a little trouble with the first batter walking stamp. Here's Logan Morrison. So two Kansas City products here squaring off. Morrison and Rosenthal. Mentioned earlier, six games. The last six for Logan Morrison. He's had a home run in four of those. He's homered here today. Opposite field, two run shot back in the third. Twice he has grounded out to short. One of those turned into a double play. And on his hands, two strikes. The pitch at 97. Pitch was supposed to be up around the shoulders. Two and two the count. Beltron in right field extremely deep. Ground ball right side. Tough to turn to out there. The throw to first and it's into the seats. Wow. As Descalso, I'm not sure if it just flew out of his hand. His reaction, I guess that's the way it went, that he just never had a grip on it. 4 6 on the play, and then an E6, and that's his second error. Yeah, he just never had a grip on it. Yeah, and you saw he had Stanton coming down, but he peeled off, so he was never anywhere near the throw, but he didn't have the proper grip. And look at that ball just shot putting. Out right over the dugout, and so uh, another error, two base error. At the air, Echevarria's ground ball back in the fourth. That didn't come back to hurt, so let's hope this one doesn't. And here is Ozuna, 0 for 2. Swings through a 96 mile an hour fastball. That's why you really love to have power arms. 
where you have the ability in a high percentage of strikeouts. Go ahead, run at second base. 0 1 pitch. Right down the middle. 97. Osuna, as you mentioned, he was promoted from double A. 0 for 14. Goodness, where's that pitch? One and two the count. Box tracks says strike three. Morris in the runner at second. One ball and two strikes. Ozuna pops it up to the right side. Foul territory. Catch made by Craig. Two away. Derek Dietrich has doubled, hit a home run on the first pitch, back in the fourth, into the bullpen and right, and also popped out to short. I'm sure, Tony Cruz not only going over signs again, but also. Saying, hey, this guy is swinging a hot bat right now. And you have Dietrich here, Echevarri on deck, light hitting shortstop. How do we want to play this? Dietrich, two outs, runners in scoring position, just a 105 hitter. About that, just really concentrate on thinking it's a great hitter up there, and you have to execute your pitch. Strike one started off with the changeup, which they've been doing earlier in counts with Trevor Rosenthal. Here's the 0 1. How about that breaking ball at 78. And Dietrich just spinning away saying wait a minute I thought this guy throws a hundred and I'm seeing change up curveball both for strikes. And then you're sitting there going. Okay now he's supposed to throw breaking balls to me off speed pitches. Goodbye three pitches carved him up. 99 on the gun from Rosenthal. Cardinals have big bats coming up in the home half of the eighth. He will be later today an eight time All Star. Switch hitter Carlos Beltran next.
brought to you by Budweiser. America's beer supports America's heroes. And by four, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. Well, this play could be very big. It is right now. We thought he was safe. Replay shows he's safe. That could be a difference as the Marlins should have a lead at this point. Instead, we're tied up 4 4, and here's Beltron against Dunn. Mike Redmond then ejected the manager of the Marlins. Beltron on the first pitch pops it up. Out of play. And that slide, once again, the lead leg was up in the air, but it was the second, you know, his back leg touched home plate before the tag. Standing numbers in this spot for Carlos Beltron. RBI single in the third to center field. He struck out and also grounded out. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Make it 0 2. It's Beltron here, then Holiday and Cray. Marlins with a right hander throwing in their pen. Chad Qualls is that right hander in the pen. Mojica in the Cardinals pen. A fly ball lifted into shallow left near the line, near the seats, and out of play. Second career home run off a lefty for Matt Adams has tied this game. You mentioned Beltron's numbers. Very good right handed. Just natural side right handed. The 0 2 pitch to the backstop. Matt Adams with those six RBIs as a pinch hitter to lead the Cardinals in that category off the bench. Most of the scoring for St. Louis, a trend that had been developing, is that they've been scoring prior to the sixth inning and not late. Getting to starters, not necessarily bullpens. One two pitch. That's not surprising Dan because everyone has a pretty good setup man and a good closer. And get those earlier relievers. Here's a two two. Charlie Morton, Edwin Jackson, Pittsburgh and Chicago just underway. No score. Seattle, after a half inning of play, leads Cincinnati 2 to nothing. Matt Latos making that start against Jeremy Bonderman. It's Kyle Seeger with a two-run homer in that game. Two balls, two strikes on Beltron. Outfield straight away and deep. Off-speed pitch, and he pops it up. Morris in there and makes the catch one away. Cardinals had to start a play today two games back of Pittsburgh. Cincinnati four and a half games out. And two and a half back of St. Louis. That'll be it for Dunn, who gave up the home run. Walls coming in when we come back. Holiday, Craig, do up.
fans young and old enjoying this one our Chevy call to the pin. 34th appearance for Chad Qualls. And what's surprising about Qualls is that in the past he's been so good against right handers. And this year righties are hitting 286 against him. And lefties 208. And Holiday's had some success against this right hander. Think about the days when Houston and St. Louis going back and forth and the Central Division. Chad Qualls was a part of that very good bullpen they had. Since 2004, he ranked second among relievers with 630 appearances. This year, with his 34th appearance here today, he's well on his way to his ninth straight season of at least 50 relief appearances. Nine years of big league time from Harbor City, California. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Well, just like with Rosenthal, it was almost unfair that last at bat, change up, curveball, fastball, the variances in speed. Jack Ball still throws hard. His first pitch at 96, last pitch at 88. A lot of sinkers, sliders. Chop to the left side. Holiday is out number two. Brings in Craig, who's 0 for 2 with a walk. Be a cardinal home run that ends this one. Be nice to see a walk off. But Andy Pettit, 251st career win today, that ties Bob Gibson. Yep. On the all-time wins list, the Yankees have won a season-high six straight. Two outs, nobody on for Craig. Home run number seven for Matt Adams has tied it up 4 4. And of those seven home runs, four have been a go ahead home run or game tying home run. Here's a 1 1. Lined into the seats. Better pay attention down there. And again, we put them on TV, so they're going to start getting all the text messages. One and two, the count. Andy Pettit, by the way, today was start number 506 of his career. Gibson, 482 before he got to 251 wins. 251 wins, 255 complete games. And how many did he go? 9, 10, 11 extra innings and got no decisions. 1 2 pitch to Alan Craig. Single up the middle. Good at bat again by Craig. On base for the second time. And the Cardinals have the go ahead run on. Now it's just a good hitter. Usually comes through in the clutch, but here maybe he'll start a rally, a game winning rally. David Freeze knows about Indy games. We're in the eighth. Two outs, runner at first. That's Craig. Freeze's last home run. 
was against Houston. First pitch to him. David has a 500 average, one home run, two RBIs against Walls. His average against Miami is 294 with a home run and three RBIs. Flight out to center, flight out to right, grounded into a double play. Two hits, a home run. Free strikes out. That will send us to the ninth. We're tied at 4-4. Four -four. the game on the post game edition of Missouri Lottery Cardinals live Pat Harris and Chris Duncan standing by low dunk talks about approach when facing a hard thrower like Evaldi they'll have a full breakdown on Joe Kelly's afternoon plus Cardinal player reaction and Mike Matheny's post game thoughts Edward Mojica on to pitch for the cards a big bounce back game for Mojica last night guys sure was he had the two strikeouts in the ninth picked up the save it went one two three and we're tied up 4 4 at home, bringing the closer in in the ninth. Chevy called to the pin, and it's Edward Mejica. What really stands out only two walks and 35 and a third innings pitched. So three days in a row for Mejica Thursday, Friday, and this afternoon. And you hope it'll be four. And rest on Monday, the off day. Another. Pick up the win here today and save tomorrow. Strike to Echevarria. Then we'll see Brantley and the pitcher spot do up. Let's talk to John Vooch about Oscar Tavares. A quick rundown. Remember, he had the high ankle sprain. Kind of lingered for a while, and then he was cleared, was playing, but never really. Look like the same player. He's back on the disabled list and actually rehabbing in Jupiter right now. Asked him about how he was looking in center field. He says no gold glover, but uh, he's doing all right there. I think we saw that in spring training. There was definitely a learning curve there at center. Sure. And only, only get better, but 
and we'd love to see him up here at some point just to help you make a decision for next year to see if he really truly ready for next year. Young player like that gets around Beltron, Molina, Jose Okendo. That can't help, help but uh, you know rub off and the professionalism and playing at this level. Two and two. Big gap in left center field. Well, the other day, Nika said, I'm done. Shaking off Molina. My 11 months here, I'm not going to do that. Shook him off for the game tying hit, game winning hit. And we just saw in that previous pitch, he shook off Tony Cruz. Here's a 2 2 pitch. Round ball and backing up. Tough play. Nicely done. David Freeze, nice play. Doesn't take that at bat into the field after he struck out just moments ago. Yeah, a lot of times when you back up like he did, then you're really at the mercy of the hop you're going to get. But in this case, backs up, backhands it, and then the strong throw across. When you let the ball play you, a lot of bad things can happen. And he was able to, a little tricky hop, able to corral it and throw him out. Cardinals are the only team left in Major League Baseball without a walk off win this season. That's what I mean, or do, the do factor. Greg Dobbs has moved to the on deck circle. The Marlins, the zero ERA, one one pitch. Just to revisit the deal, it was Mejica for third baseman Cox, and last check he was in double A. And at one point was a guy that any team could have had. Ground ball right side backhanded by Craig leads Mejica for the outs. Alan Craig couple of dandy plays today. Just a good player isn't he? He really is exceptional hitter but we've seen him. You know and all over the diamond. Where it's first. If it's right field left field be able to make the plays and I'm sure. In a pinch you could put him over third base and do a fine job for you too. Two thirds of an inning for Qualls, and it'll be Dobbs pinch hitting for him. Two outs, nobody on. Ciszek is the closer. Also, Ramos, Ramos they got them both throwing in the pen. Two outs and nobody on. Ground ball that's hit to short. Taken there by Descalso. Makes the play. Can the Cardinals have a walk-off win? Why not today? We'll find out when we come back.
This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the Cardinals. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. A.J. Ramos, a right-hander, takes over for the Florida Marlins. Ramos struck out three over a pair of scoreless innings. That was against the Twins back on the 25th of June. And since that time, he's been up and down. And Ramos takes over for the Florida Marlins. It's our Chevy call to the pin. Not a big guy, 5'10", 200 pounder. Right-handers hitting only 188 against him this year. Well, he's earned a win in three of his last five outings. Marks the longest winning streak of the season by a pitcher on the staff. He's a rookie. He has pitched one game against the Cardinals. And in two innings, he's allowed three runs, a 13.5 ERA. Descalzo one for one off him, a double. Scalso, Cruz, and Jay. Descalso out to center field. One pitch and one out. But Tony Cruz last year playing in front of family and friends down in Miami had a big home run against the Marlins in that series there. You never know. It wasn't against Ramos, but doesn't mean again hit one off him. One for three today. Single to left field last time up. A breaking ball taken low. Cardinals on their bench still with Molina, Wigginton. Cosma and Robinson. One man that came off the bench. Who paid off right time. Two run homer by Adams to tie it up. One oh pitch. Three ground ball outs for Edward Mejica to send us tied up 4 4. Off the hook, gave up four runs in his start today. Definitely gave his team a chance to win. You have Molina on the bench, so if Tony Cruz gets aboard, you could pinch run if you wanted to. And Cruz hits a high fly ball out to deep right. That'll stay in the ballpark, and there's two away. Some of the fans were hoping they could get over to the air show in about seven minutes. We would see it in its entirety if we get a home run right now. Two outs, and here's John Jay. Looks at ball one. Jay has struck out, picked up an infield hit, and also flied out to left. Shane Robinson has moved to the on deck circle.
thing the Marlins have been very good at lack of walks. Pitching is turned around for them. Came into play only 34 walks in the last 140 innings. 3 0 pitch. 3 and 1. Three two pitch. John Jay. The winning run at first base. Shane Robinson will be the pinch hitter with the winning run standing at first. So line on Mahika and any all zeros. Shane Robinson this year is a pinch hitter one for seven with one RBI. First pitch to Shane Robinson. Here it comes. You look at Shane Robinson, you'd say, well, get, he's not going to hit it out of the ballpark, but yeah, we saw pretty good power this spring. Occasional home run he'll get into. It's ball up in the zone. He likes it up there. Here's a 1 0 pitch to Robinson. Very limited playing time this year for Shane. But we've seen he's a good defensive player all three outfield spots. Two balls and no strikes. Would they think about starting John Jay? Not running and the pitch has popped up. Foul. Some of the throws we've seen. Brantley make in between innings. It's a valid point. John Jay really doesn't uh, even though he's one of the better runners on the team. He's by far not that adept at getting good jumps and reads. If you're wondering, John Jay with three stolen bases this year, caught stealing one time. Three and one. Matt Carpenter on deck. Start the runner now. He's not running and ooh, good rip by Robinson. Full count. Good pitch up there. No doubles defense in the outfield. John Jay off of this pitch. Three two two Robinson. That's a base hit in the right field. Jay on his way to third. And Carpenter could win it in this game. And he may just win it now. And they 
team in Major League Baseball to have a walk-off and it took something unusual for it to happen but it did. Shane Robinson Budweiser player of the game a 3-2 pitch base hit into right. This is supposed to be routine in the big league. Stanton back into the infield. It gets away in a heads up play by John Jay as he scores the game winning run. And the Cardinals have made it two in a row over Miami. And almost hit John Jay going out to right field. They give Shane Robinson a double. But as you say, they muff the relay throw. It gets underneath the glove of Logan Morrison, slowed it up. And John Jay paying attention, raced on home. Maybe that's why they're 32 and 54. It's a win. St. Louis will take it.